Welcome to The Twist. I'm Erica Gray. And I'm Don Pravda. Welcome. There's a big contradiction, Don, in the fact that when you go to the European Union Parliament, Simone Weil, who was a Jewish MEP from the early days of the EU Parliament, and she is celebrated big time in the European Union, as well as Louise Weiss, who was a journalist. And you have these two Jewish women who yes. are celebrated. A uh, building is named after Louise Weiss. And you have Simone Weil, whose picture is just plastered in Paris, as well as within the EU Parliament. All this sections of the building just devoted to her memory and her contribution. But yet, there is this firm stand on a two-state solution, which wants to essentially would lead to the possible destruction of Israel. Because it's clear by the Palestinians in this, that the idea is not to recognize Israel, but to rather eradicate the nation. So why all this celebration of these Jewish women mm. and yet this stand, which is anti-Jewish? Well, the contradictions of life. And let's uh, two women from different eras, Louise Weiss, let's call in general from the World War I era, and Simone Weil from the World War II era. Simone Weil saw terrible suffering in her lifetime and witnessed the Jews taken away during World War II from France. And this never left her memory, the atrocities, those times. She saw, she knew what was happening in Alsatian Jewry. She, she, she saw the Nazi takeover of her own country, saw her own people mm -hmm. taken away, and saw the valiant efforts by France and the Allies to win World War II. However, her outlook is a very modern one and is skewed. And she was not... Uh, truly, in fact, a citizen of Israel, nor one who lived in Israel and saw life in a very modern lens. Uh, she's also known as a leading feminist in her time, one who valued uh, women's rights and opportunity for females. We have to also mention this. However, her viewpoint of Israel is that of a very modern person, uh, perhaps even more left or centrist leaning, and did not see, was not compelled by uh, what, what most Jews feel in these times, of course, who in particular align with Likud or rabbinical Judaism. And, uh, and so therefore it was a very, very, a modern outlook, and she felt that uh, all people should uh, live together and have, it's a theme of hers, equal rights. But again, as I've said before, uh, Israel is not in the, as quoted by a famous rabbi, in the Midwest, Israel is in the Middle East. It's in a very different part of the world, and it has it's from a diff very different culture. Well, Simone Weil also embraced European Union federalism, yes. or European federalism. And, and mm -hmm. her book yeah. on the European Union is actually listed in the European Parliaments and Councils 100 books, which is a real honor because those books are usually yeah. by EU architects or who would be considered an architect or someone who was uh, one of the founders or key figures. But I can understand her actually embracing federalist ideology, which is the idea or which Monet or Jean Monet, who 
is the considered the founding father of the European Union, the idea was that if you pooled the production of coal and steel in France and Germany, you would prevent war between those Mm -hmm. two nations, which there was a history of. And then the idea was, as you brought in other nations, this too would prevent war. And the Federalist ideology is the antithesis of National Socialism. So I can understand her, Don, actually embracing that ideology and becoming part of the European movement, which she was. But, and here is the big but, is that the European Union, within the EU, she is an iconic figure. Because let's face it, a huge part of what happened in World War II was was the Holocaust. So she becomes this symbol of the Holocaust who is now taking a leading position as if her being there and being that symbol puts a stamp of a huge approval on this movement, this European movement to unite these nations, to eliminate war on the continent. And I think using the Holocaust or someone who would represent the Holocaust and the Jewish pain and suffering from that event to right the EU movement's cause is wrong when at the same time you're initiating policy that could potentially destroy that nation. So they're having her as that emblem is not so negative in my opinion, if they were to truly continue what would be her cause, which would be for Israel or for her people. And they're not doing that by this two-state solution, which is ultimately going to harm the Jews. Your two cents now, Don. Well... I think if Simone Weil had lived, she might be looking at Israel through a different lens. And uh, just in a comment that was made in the previous show, um, Simone Weil had never lived in the Arab world. She had never lived in the Middle East. She might have also seen something that a, a rabbi commented on who was my guest in a Holocaust Memorial many years, Israel provided a place for 930,000 Jews from Arab lands. They had a place to go. They had a place to call a homeland. And this is something that Simone probably had not seen or experienced. And and she, uh, it, it might have been very challenging for her to see the growth of Israel, to see its success, to see its impact on the world. As in fact, let's add Louise Weiss, if she had lived to, to be in this era and seen Israel's success. And let's add something, we're on the cusp of Israel's 75th birthday this miracle of Israel. So therefore, I am sure, I can't say with certainty, but these two women, I, I really feel in my heart, they would have embraced Eretz Yisrael, the state of Israel. Yes. And they would have also been part of, well, especially Simone Weil, Israel-Europe relations and the improvement of those relations. Mm -hmm. But it does seem to me to be a big contradiction to see her plastered all over the parliament when they're taking such a political stand, which they may not view as against Israel, but is. I mean, they're endorsing both UN resolutions. They're endorsing a the idea of a Geneva Convention article 
uh, calling the settlements uh, occupied territory. I mean, they're 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 embracing the rhetoric, they're embracing the propaganda, yeah. and it just is a big, huge contribution. So it almost seems as if they're using this woman and her legacy for just their own benefit. And they're really being hypocritical. And uh, Simone Weil did not see modern television as it is. She has not seen newspapers in France or read current editorials where Israel is constantly, constantly damaged in the media. It would have been very interesting for her to have picked up the newspaper read these articles and seen Jews demeaned mm -hmm. in this current era. So we don't know exactly what her reaction would be, but these are part of the contradictions in life. These two women have statues. They're venerated like founders of modern France and yet have uh, perhaps opposing views to that of patriots of Israel. Yes. And Simone Weil is literally plastered on the walls of the European Union Parliament. In which we were there. And we and saw that. We, we saw those many in, displays. and In Belgium and Her name on the floor. And, in Strasbourg. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, that yeah. mammoth building. By the way, Don, those buildings are huge. And those buildings haven't just been built. They've been around yeah, since one of them, since the 80s and the late 90s. I mean, they, this is a serious, serious empire. The EU empire. As, as, as Manuel Barroso, former commission president, stated back in 2007, when he was asked by a journalist, what's the configuration of this? Nobody can understand it. And he said, an empire, a non-imperial empire. And... That's pretty evident in the size and scope of the buildings. But again, one of the buildings is the Louise Weiss building. And Simone Weil is just plastered all over the EU Parliament in Strasbourg. Any final thoughts, Don? Any final thoughts? I'm just going to be very pro-Israel, proactive, and say, thankfully, there is a homeland for the Jews, and that's Israel. There's a homeland for Jews from South America, Central America, North America, Europe, Jews in the Middle East. There's a place for Jews to be welcomed. And let's add something from the director of the Jewish community in Germany, Mr. Lehrer. 500 Jews have arrived from the Ukraine in Cologne, Germany. They are embracing them. He has placed the Lubavitch community in charge of this emigration. So therefore, I'm proving my point now. There is a place for the Jewish people from Russia and the Ukraine to go, and that is Israel. And thankfully for the present time, they are in Germany and being welcomed. However, in the long run, there is Israel. Yes. Well said, Mr. Pravda. Well said. Well, that wraps up our show. And till next time, be sure to check out our Amazon store. Uh, subscribe to our channel if you do not. And stay tuned for more. Any final words, Mr. Don? And thank you and shalom, shalom. Shalom.